Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to patch change gallery rows in Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, SharePoint, and Teams videos, feel free to subscribe because we're putting out more videos in those areas. So let's get into the video. So if you haven't seen my video I posted yesterday, I recommend checking that out, how to make a gallery look like an Excel sheet. So I'm just going to talk about how the process works. If I change one of these values in this row, I want that to patch on the SharePoint side. So I will be using my employee data SharePoint list. And we have two single columns of text, a single choice field, a multiple choice field. And we are working with the date field. So let's go back into here. So since yesterday's video, the first name column is still the same. I'm still using an input input for that. Last name still the same. I'm using an input for that. I'll talk about the toggle in a second. So the job title, I actually changed to a combo box because it's a lot easier to use and it's more user friendly. So if I click on the drop down, I can choose one of these. And that's very useful because if I just left it in the input box, a user can type a choice that's not part of the predefined choices. So that'd be anything that's not here. And we don't want that. We want the user to pick a specific choice. So for the combo box, I just made the width uh, the same as the header. I start at the X where the, uh, where the header begins. And then I set the select multiple to false. And that's because this is only a single choice column. So you can only have one value in there. So you want to set the multiple select multiple to false. And for the choices, I'm doing all the choices available available in the employee data SharePoint table and on the job title field. So that is all of these values. If you want to enter your own values in here, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, the height is just the gallery two template height. And the default selected items is this item dot job title. You're not using the default on the combo boxes. Uh, it does nothing. You wanna use the default selected items. All right, so for the next field, we are doing a combo box on the multiple choice column scale. And the positions are all the same. It's, I'm just matching up with the header up here. The select multiple will be selected to true because I wanna be able to select multiple values in that field. The items are just the choices in the employee data SharePoint table on the skill. Uh, is searchable is up to you. I just set that to false. You can set to true if you want. The height is the gallery two height. And the default selected items is this item dot skill. And I also did change the date from a input to a date select field. And that's just to help with the comparison that we'll, I will be talking about later. So the default date will be this item dot start date. So that is all the changes I made from yesterday. I also had this button up here. So when a user makes changes, I want all the changes to be saved when I press submit. And the main way I did this is let me set my toggle right here to visible. So I'm be basically just using a toggle to check if any of these columns in this row has changed. And that is on the, the default property of the toggle. So I'm checking to see if this item dot title, so it's checking the title field in the SharePoint list. So let's use this Chris row. I'm checking to see if this title dot, this item dot title, which is Chris, is not equal to the text input underscore first name dot text. So that is actually what is in the power app. So if I change Joey to chill we want, it's not going to match what's on the back end Joey. So that row did change. The same goes for all the other fields, but the single line of text fields are easy to work with. The choices fields are harder to work with and the date is somewhat easy to use. So I'm just gonna talk about the toggle one. So if this item dot title is not equal to the text input underscore first name dot text, so that is Joey right here. Uh, 
I want this to return true. So I have or statements on each of these. So if any of these, if any of these columns do not match up, this is going to flip the toggle to true. The next row is this item dot last name is not equal to text input underscore last name dot text. So again, it's just looking at the the text right here. So the next row is a single choice field. So this item dot job value dot value because it is a choice field. So you have to include the dot value. It's not equal to combo combo underscore job title dot selected dot value. So that is whatever is selected in this field. So if it's not equal to a data analyst or Alice, uh, this will light up because it says data analysis on the back end. So the next one is a multiple choice combo box. This is harder to work with. You have to use the concat function on it. So concat this item dot skill, comma value, comma double quotes, comma space double quotes parentheses. So it's just connect concatenating all the values from the skill. So this one is three. So it's just con concatenate all those into a text string uh, separated by a comma and a space. Set this back. And then I'm doing that not equals to the combo underscore skill. So this column uh, selected value, selected items, uh, comma value, comma, uh, double quotes, comma, space, double quotes, parentheses. So I'm just making them both strings. So if one of the strings doesn't match up to the other, uh, we know we have to patch that. And last is the date field. So this is text. I'm changing this to text so I can compare the strings. So I'm just doing text, uh, this item dot start date. So it's grabbing this start date for this row. And I have the format for month. Uh, backslash day backslash year and not equal to text date select underscore start date dot selected date with the same format so let's go ahead and i'll show you what happens when i change one of these values so if i change joey to joe the toggle gets flipped and we know we have to patch this row because something has changed in this row if i switch it back to joey the toggle goes back to false i change smith to Smithy to Smith, the toggle gets activated. If I switch data analysis to software developer, it also gets activated. If I switch it back, it doesn't get activated. So this one is Power Automate Excel and Power Apps. If I add Word onto that, the text string that we're comparing it to uh, changes, and we know that something changed and that we need to update it. If I remove it, it switches back to off. Same with selected date. If I change the selected date to the third, it changes. If I change it back, it goes back. Let's go ahead and change some of these values. We'll just change Alice to uh, Allie. I will change Nate to Nate Steely. I will switch Alexa Violet from Clerk to Recruiter. And she also develops skills in Word. And let's go ahead and switch Ronnie. Oh, I just don't check it. Uh, let's go ahead and switch Ronnie's last name to... Uh, Board. Maybe he got married or something, and we'll switch him to database man, and we will add Outlook to his thing. So let's go ahead and look at our submit button. So our submit button has an on select property for for all. I'm doing a for all on the filter gallery two dot all items. So I'm taking all the items here. I'm just filtering to see which ones have the toggle equal to true. So that's all of these that are switched to on. And then I just wanna patch the employee data for this record. So that would only be these records. So Allie, Nate, Alexa, and Ronnie. So each of these will get patched individually. And I'm just patching the fields that, uh, pretty much all these fields again. So the title is going to be whatever we change. So it's text input underscore first name dot text. So it's the text in these boxes. So the first name text, the last name text, job title is whatever we selected in that combo box so combo underscore job title dot selected a skill is a multiple choice column so that would be combo underscore skill dot selected items and start date is just date start underscore selected date dot selected date because that is a date picker field 
So let's go ahead and patch these. So to patch all these, I pretty much just have to click Submit. And we have Ali, Nate, Alexa, and Ronnie. Submit. So they pretty much all just updated right there to the new values. And the toggles got switched back to off because they're now matching what's in the text inputs to the back end. So let's go ahead and check the back end. So we now have Ali. We have Ronnie, last name board, database man. Uh, Alexa has word. So pretty much all the changes went into place. So that's how you would patch change rows in a gallery in Power Apps. Uh, this is pretty much more complicated, but it's a really nice feature. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this toggle back to false because we don't want the user to see this. So false. Uh, even though the it's not visible, it still works on the back end. So you can't see it just for testing. You want to have that showing so you can see if these equal up or not. I hope you guys enjoyed the video about this Excel grid. It's very useful. It's very handy. It looks really professional when you make a power app like this because a lot of users use Excel all the time. So it's they're kind of familiar with the with the layout and it just makes it easier if they have all of these change and uh, a single submit button. So if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, which you might, uh, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to help you guys out. And I will catch you in the next video.